Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. The brutality of mental health is a relentless storm that rages within the hidden depths of the human soul. Leaving a trail of shattered hopes and fractured spirits in its wake, it is an affliction that knows no boundaries, showing no mercy as it tightens its grip on those who bear its burden. Like an unrelenting temptist, it strikes without warning, consuming its victims with a darkness that is unfathomable. A darkness that is not visible to the naked eye, but one that cuts deeper than any physical wound. The scars it leaves are not on the skin, but etched into the very core of a person's being, leaving them to grapple with a pain that is all-consuming. In the face of such brutality, we must extend our compassion, understanding and support to those who bear this heavy burden, for it is in our collective humanity that we find the strength to weather the storm and bring light to the darkest corners of the mind. Today's video covers themes of mental health and the grotesque reality of self-mutilation. This video is not for the faint of heart, and if you're affected by issues covered in today's video, now is the time to turn back. Since the late 1990s and the introduction of home computers and the internet, shock videos and shock sites have been a prevalent and continuing phenomenon online. Way back when, sites such as Rotten.com and Ogrish were the places to find such content, from downright depraved videos from war zones to videos of utter degeneracy, usually showing a person performing disgusting acts on themselves or another person. Many videos, such as One Guy One Jar, One Guy One Screwdriver, as well as Two Girls One Cup, were designed, filmed and released purely with the intent to shock and sicken those who viewed them. In some ways, shock videos were the original viral content. Even as a teenager at school, back in the late 2000s, most of us were aware of such videos, very often daring one another to watch them in a juvenile bid to prove our masculinity to one another. Most videos back then, while extremely disgusting and without doubt those who starred in them were mentally unwell, they were just treated as taboo and as messed up as it sounds, harmless. However, as the years progressed and the online community grew, small subcultures of communities glorifying such content began to spring up. While most of these groups are made up of edgy teenagers going through a phase, sharing and spamming the latest gore video while proclaiming, it isn't that bad bro, there are still without a doubt some truly evil individuals within these communities. Although there are various different servers and groups on apps such as Discord and Telegram which share your regular surface web gore, which is bad enough in itself, there are also communities dedicated to grooming individuals into committing heinous acts, whether it be upon themselves, or even in some cases, to other people. Over the years, various groups online have been exposed for committing such acts on troubled and vulnerable people, very often teenagers. Usually, such individuals will prey on the lonely and naive before entrapping them with threats of doxing or leaking lewd photos. Under these threats, at this point, such groups will then demand that the victim hurts themselves very often via attacking. Other cases even include people being threatened into killing their own pets. An infamous Discord group and self-proclaimed online cult named 764 allegedly committed such acts on various individuals, and they preyed on the underage. Allegedly, they would force their victims via threats of doxing to carve 764 into their arm so that they forever pledged allegiance to the group. In one specific incident, which put the 764 group on the radar, was the actions of its alleged leader, Brad764. 
In one instance, it's speculated that he forced a well-known 764 member who was only around 13 years old to bite off the head of her pet hamster, decapitating it. 764 were also linked to the murder of a 74-year-old woman in Romania. The act was perpetrated by a 17-year-old German teenager who allegedly had links to the infamous 764 group. 764 are the most well-known, but there are a whole host of other similar sick groups lurking on various communication apps and chat rooms. The presence of such groups is without a doubt unsettling as it is, but ultimately, some people are in such a mental state that they do not need encouragement to seriously hurt themselves, which is a damning indictment on society in itself. One of the most disturbing subcultures across most mainstream social media platforms is the so-called cutting communities, where users will share pictures of their self-inflicted wounds in various states. From fresh cuts to old scars, which, in some case, cover the entirety of the person's arms or legs. In looking at such communities, the sickest aspect is the comments under these posts, with many congratulating the individual on their wounds, with some posting horrific comments such as, you should have went deeper, and sadistic things of that nature. Big social media platforms such as X, Facebook, as well as communication apps such as Discord and Telegram have a huge problem with such communities existing, with people mutilating themselves all whilst being encouraged by others. Though very little action seems to have been taken by any of the aforementioned companies. The fact that such communities exist online is without a doubt extremely disturbing, but the reality is, self-mutilation videos have flooded the internet for many years by this point, with the majority who perpetrate and record such acts having no ties to such groups. Instead, the mental turmoil that they are suffering is all the motivation they need to carry out such horrific acts. Some videos detailing such acts are simply that of sexual degeneracy, the best case study of such an instance would be the infamous One Guy One Jar video. One Guy One Jar was a sickening shock video released in 2008 and was uploaded to the website efucked.com. The video details Alexei Tatarov shoving a glass jar up his sunny before it eventually breaks inside of him, causing severe bleeding as he picks shards of broken glass out of himself. It's still in my opinion one of the sickest shock videos out there, but it wasn't Alexei Tatarov's only video of its kind. He also in 2009 released a video titled One Guy One Screwdriver once again to efucked.com. In the video, he shoves a screwdriver handle first down his urethra, once again causing severe bleeding as he pulls it out. Both videos are disgusting and extremely unsettling, Though, Alexei Tatarov these days is seen as a comedic relic of the internet, despite his sick and depraved activities, which in my mind without a doubt were fueled by some kind of mental illness or sexual depravity. In recent weeks, a new video made the rounds, which harkened back to the days of BME Pain Olympics. The BME Pain Olympics was a competition run by Body Modification Ezine, BME, to find the person who had the highest tolerance for pain. Participants engage in violent displays of body modification, genital mutilation, and bodily mutilations. BME compiled what they considered to be the most disturbing and shocking entries in a series of videos that have inspired debate, condemnation, and reaction videos online. Although some claim that the actions depicted in these videos are fake, and some videos were indeed confirmed as fake, many treated the BME Pain Olympic videos like a regular shock site, challenging themselves and others to watch and record their reactions to the clips. In 1994, Canadian writer and body modification enthusiast Shannon Lorat launched BME as a website, and the website became one of the internet's premier sources for piercing, tattoos, and other body modification. 
The exact date of the first Pain Olympics is disputed, but it likely took place in either 2002 or 2003. While some claim the first Pain Olympics took place in 2002, BME's website Wiki says that the company held its first BME Fest in 2003 in Tweed, Ontario, Canada, which is where the first Pain Olympics allegedly took place. Some of the events included drinking hot sauce, forehead pulling, and seeing how much weight one could carry on a suspension. The event would be an annual one until 2008. On the 24th of September 2004, the website PainOlympics.com launched, hosting the video BME Pain Olympics 3, which showcased a series of extreme body modification clips. In 2007, a hoax internet viral video entitled BME Pain Olympics Final Round, which is not associated with the BME Pain Olympics, spread in popularity as a result of a series of reaction videos. It was viewed and promoted by a large number of web surfers and popular bloggers such as comedian and podcast host Joe Rogan, and has been the subject of reaction videos on sites, including YouTube. In the video, two men are seen performing genital self-mutilation, including using a meat cleaver set to the song Living Like a Zombie by Mortification. The original video was hosted on BMEZine.com, and it displayed a message at the end, confirming it was fake. However, most of the other versions of the video on other websites do not have that message at the end, leading people to believe it was real. According to Shannon Lorat, the creator of the video, the two competitors, who are actually the same person, used prosthetic makeup and the video contains no actual body modification or mutilation. Despite the video being fake, it attracted huge attention online in the first decade of the 21st century, becoming one of the first viral online videos, which back in the day was a common occurrence. The original viral videos were usually shocking in nature. Other videos, which attracted similar attention at the time, were Two Girls One Cup, One Guy One Horse, and obviously One Man One Jar. However, in subsequent years, and as social media has grown into the juggernaut that it is today, worse and far more shocking videos tend not to attract the same level of attention as back in the day. Which brings us to a specific video which I believe was released in October of 2023. I'm not certain on the authenticity of the clip in question, but from regrettably watching it, it looks absolutely real. The video hasn't made the rounds online, despite its gruesome nature, and I would have had no idea it existed without a couple of subscribers sending me the clip, warning me of its content prior to watching. Like the idiot I am, I watched it, and ended up feeling sick to my stomach. But nevertheless... What happens in the actual video? Unfortunately, the video itself has little to no backstory that I can find online, though it's clear that the act perpetrated in the clip was fueled by mental illness. That of course, if the video is indeed real, which as stated previously, it does indeed look legit. The video itself is actually short, at only 32 seconds in length. Due to the nature of the clip, I can show very little, if any, still images. There are also no clues in regards to what country the video comes from, but I presume it to be a western country, maybe America, or a country in Europe. As you play the video, you see a man who is dressed up in female clothing. He appears to be wearing a pink skirt and blouse. He has the skirt pulled down, exposing his jaws. In his left hand, he is carrying a power tool that has been turned on. It's a rotary circular saw. In his right hand, he holds his piece as he holds the rotating blade in the other. The blade screeches as the man in the video slowly moves the blade closer to his gen- It's clear what he's about to do. He takes a while and has to brace himself before he does the deed. The blade is dangerously close to his manhood before eventually the man takes the spinning blade and cuts into his piece. Blood sprays like a red mist, 
and covers the man's left thigh and the table he is standing next to. In a matter of seconds, he slices off his own piece. And he then throws it on the table and takes a few seconds to collect himself. He then turns the circular saw off. There is a lot of blood, and you hear the man heavily breathing due to shock. After a few seconds, the man reaches down and picks up his own severed cernius and briefly shows it to the camera. It truly is a gruesome sight. He then reaches down again, and he picks something up off camera. You then hear him undoing a jar, and you see that he places his own severed cernius in the jar before he then seals it. The video ends there. Quite frankly, in terms of the visceral nature of the clip, it genuinely made me sick to my stomach. I do hope it is fake, similar to the old BME videos back in the day, but this video to me looked all too real. I hope the man is just a great practical effects artist, and that it is indeed fake, but I suspect he instead is severely mentally unwell. What would drive someone to do such a thing to themselves? Is such behaviour encouraged? Not directly, of course, but some of the New Age narratives in Western culture without a doubt are destructive, and quite frankly, are not conducive of a productive, happy society. There are various political elements that we can take from this case, but due to censorship on this platform, I can't really talk about them in any great detail. All I will say is those out there who are concerned about what our children are being taught and exposed to at a young age are absolutely right. Keep fighting the good fight against the army of insanity and utter degeneracy. But anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it if you can enjoy this sort of content. I struggled to actually make this one. Number one, uh, the lack of backstory behind the clip. And number two, there's a lot more to talk about here, but due to YouTube being YouTube, uh, we can't really touch upon those issues. Um, but I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts below on this case. If anybody's seen it, do you think it's real? I certainly do. And um, quite frankly, it's one of the worst videos I've seen this year in terms of how it made me feel uh, physically. Most videos... Um, the visceral nature of such videos don't usually get to me. Uh, it's usually the human element that makes me feel a certain way uh, about the cases we cover on this channel, but this video just made me feel sick, to tell you the truth. And it's one of those rare ones I wished I never watched. Um, but yeah, mental illness is a hell of a thing. Anyway, thank you guys for the support. If you could follow me on Twitter... Uh, drop me a DM if you have any uh, case recommendations, anything like that. Uh, link will be in the pinned comments. Also, if you could follow me on Twitch, that would be much appreciated also. Anyway, as always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.